everybody knows that all the people don't have liberty, all the people don't have freedom, all the people don't have justice, and all the people don't have power, so that means none of us do. Shall it be offer for the independent media center and the camcorder, Truth Jihad? The only thing that's going to stop this is a militant, militant devastation against the city of San Francisco. Hey, hey! is intending to fill the streets and reclaim the streets and reclaim the spaces that have been absolutely hijacked. I think there's a lot of people here for how freezing cold it is out here. I'm really excited. I did not think there was going to be this many people. I'm just totally pumped. <laughs> So, what's this all about? It's actually all about what Oxford City Council has sanctioned in the redevelopment of Bond Square by cutting down already one, two, three, four, five, because two of them were saplings, trees at the early hours of the morning, three days ago now. I live below it, my friends up the tree house. It's about trying to save this tree, but it's about raising awareness as well. What are they doing? What, where do they get permission? They came early in the morning. We got a receipt for the fencing that we found on the floor that he put around here. They started at 6.30 in the morning. The fencing came at 7.30. They were already there. Chainsaws were moving before the fencing even arrived and they'd already killed the trees there. Two friends of mine managed to acquire planking from behind, the church behind, with the pastor's permission, on their lunchtime and get the tree house up, which stopped them getting this tree. Gabs is still asleep up there, because he's been awake a long time, as you can imagine. And that is what stopped their progress at the moment. Well, the plans we've seen are lodging there, and it's going to be pedestrianised, and they're going to put, apparently, eight saplings, or they say mature saplings, in the place of these trees. Well, look at the thing behind, the tree behind you. How can you replace that in any of your lifetimes? Even your children's lifetimes, how can you replace that? Well, one tree there. One tree there two trees over here and you'll have to walk me, me to so i can show you i'll show you their their sights thank you this was an oak that was an oak tree okay. this was an elm See, where, this is where they've already rotivated and dug out the roots. This was an elm. This here was another great oak, an oak tree. We had a gentleman last night who came up and the blue tarp there and the green tarp there, he brought us along with a flask of coffee and food and he met his, his wife here and the man was 82 years old and he married her at 21 years old. Less. Tarmac and block paving mm -hmm. and they say mature saplings. Mm. Well, mm. <laughs> contradiction in terms. Isn't it? Mature, mature saplings. Mature saplings. <laughs> right. It is totally bizarre. What can people do about this? We can't stop what's going to happen here, but we can raise awareness of what is happening not only in Oxford, but in every city in this country, every city in Europe.
Oh, hi. I'm Steve Heiss. I'm the producer and editor of the Indie Media Newsreel, which is the program you're watching right now. Or, well, I mean... Very, very important message. So listen very carefully. Not now, now. Because now, now, I'm recording this, and then I have to edit it. And But, but I mean, for your now, right now, as you're watching this, it's now. Um, well, anyway... Um, Newsreel is a monthly program that's been in production for about seven years. Every month, activist video producers from around the country, around the world even, send in video segments about events in their communities. Events where people are standing up for what they believe in and trying to make a difference in the world. However, we have a problem. Lately, for whatever reason, when I sit down toward the end of the month to work on putting together the next month's program, I look at the pile of submissions sent to me and, well, that pile's been pretty empty. For some reason, people just aren't sending very much in. And I'm not sure why, but I need contributions to make the show happen. I can't just make it out of thin air. I need other people's documentaries. Little documentaries. Two minutes, five minutes, ten minutes about things going on around them in their communities. So if you're watching this and you like this program, maybe you can help. Maybe you make videos or know someone who does. Someone who's involved with a local struggle and wants to document that struggle. Or maybe someone who's already making short little documentaries and wants more opportunities to get the word out about what they're doing. There's more details about this project at newsreel.indymedia.org. Help spread the word. Thanks for your help and thanks for watching. Bye. Das Einstellungsbündnis hat sich zusammengefunden, nachdem ähm, vier Menschen verhaftet wurden im Juli dieses Jahres, am 31.07. Ähm, mit dem Vorwurf, Mitglieder der militanten Gruppe zu sein. Und ähm, ja, es ist das Bündnis von Freunden, Genossinnen aus dem weitesten Umfeld eben dieser Verhafteten und anderer Betroffener in diesem Verfahren. Es wird versucht, einer Gruppe von Menschen eine Straftat nachzuweisen, wobei völlig egal ist, um wen es sich da, also wer dann genau diese konkrete Straftat begangen hat, wenn man sich jetzt auf diese juristische Ebene einlässt und von Straftaten redet. Und das rechtfertigt ein riesige, riesiges Arsenal von Ermittlungsmethoden. Und wir sagen einfach, das ist völlig überzogen und diese Verfahren gehören eingestellt. Das Absurde an diesem Verfahren ist, es gibt vier Beschuldigte, denen eben aufgrund ihrer wissenschaftlichen Tätigkeit vorgeworfen wird, geistig in der Lage zu sein, die Bekennerschreiben der MG zu verfassen. Dann gibt es zwei Kontakte, so heißt es in der Ermittlungsakte, zwischen meinem Mandanten und einer weiteren Person. Daraufhin wird diese Person einfach mit ins Ermittlungsverfahren geholt und dann wird diese Person Monate später mit weiteren zwei Personen soll dabei überwacht worden sein, wie sie versucht hat, unter Militär-LKWs Brandsätze gelegt zu haben. Diese drei Personen wurden gemeinsam mit meinem Mandanten, dem Richter, auch beim BGH vorgeführt und dann in Haft genommen. Das heißt aber, der einzige Link dazu, dass sie Mitglieder einer, in einer terroristischen Vereinigung sein sollen, funktioniert über meinen Mandanten. Wir sind ja hier heute mit einer kleinen Kundgebung vor der Polizeiwache, wo die DNA probe abgegeben werden musste. Und das ist so ein kleines symbolisches Zeichen. So, man wird eben mit den Repressionen und mit den Zwangsmaßnahmen, die so ein Ermittlungsverfahren mit sich bringt, nicht allein gelassen, sondern da geht man eben zusammen hin. Und das Zeichen ist bei mir und auch bei allen anderen hier ganz gut angekommen. Also es reicht alleine aus, wenn man bestimmte Personen kennt, mit denen telefoniert mit denen möglicherweise auch in irgendwelchen politischen Gruppen zusammensitzt, dass man dann eben auch Terrorverdächtiger wird. 
Das zieht dann sehr, sehr weite Kreise. Also aus einer WG wird in die nächste telefoniert, von dieser WG wieder in die nächste. Da kommen schnell Hunderte und Tausende von abgehörten Menschen zusammen. Also insgesamt sind es mittlerweile 12, 13, 14 Betroffene. Die heutigen Untersuchungen sollten Aufschluss erbringen über die Strukturen und die personelle Zusammensetzung von diesen äh, Gruppierungen und dienten nicht in erster Linie zur Verhinderung von konkreten Anschlägen. Dafür gab es keine Anhaltspunkte. Gibt es so, so ein Gespräch von, wo man denken kann, Zaun, da ist eine Lücke, muss man einreißen, aufschneiden. Sie haben natürlich nur bei Zaun sofort assoziiert, Heiligen Damm, Zaun. <lacht> es war das hier gemeint, und für Sie war es ein Zeichen von, da haben wir sie, jetzt haben wir so, in jeder dieser Durchsuchungsbescheide oder sowas, überall kommt dieses gleiche dumme Gespräch wieder vor. Ich hatte, glaube ich, schon erzählt, dass Axel, Oliver und Florian vorgeworfen wird, Militärfahrzeuge in Brand gesetzt zu haben. Und ich denke, man sollte da ganz anders nochmal drüber nachdenken, wo eigentlich, wo eigentlich die Schweinereien passieren. Die Antikriegsaktion, die Oliver, Axel und Florian vorgeworfen wird, verstehen wir als Beitrag zu antimilitaristischen Bewegungen und Friedensbewegungen, die seit dem Jugoslawienkrieg gegen deutsche Kriegseinsätze protestieren. Dieser Krieg etablierte neue Verhältnisse einer deutschen Normalität. Seitdem haben wir es mit einer Normalisierung von militärischen Auslandseinsätzen zur Absicherung geopolitischer Strategien in der Sicherung von Einflusszonen, Wirtschaftsmärkten und Rohstoffquellen zu tun und auch mit einer schleichenden Militarisierung von Innenpolitik. Die Bundesregierung und die Bundeswehr als ausführendes Organ sind die eigentliche kriminelle Vereinigung. Antimilitaristischer Widerstand ist legitim und muss breiter und vielfältiger werden. Die Verfahren gegen Axel, Oliver und Florian und alle anderen 129 A Beschuldigten müssen eingestellt werden. kann es nicht einschätzen, was jetzt folgt, was passiert, was vielleicht noch passiert und so weiter. Und das schürt äh, Angst und Unsicherheit, nicht nur bei dir selbst, sondern auch in deiner Umgebung, bei Freunden, bei Kollegen, bei Leuten, die dich kennen, die sich anfangen zu fragen, bin ich betroffen, wird mein Telefon abgehört, verfolgen sie mich und äh, die dann anfangen, unheimlich vorsichtig zu werden und so weiter und so fort. Und ich glaube, der Weg ist schon, zu verstehen äh, und zu reflektieren, was mit dir selbst passiert und dann versuchen auch es aktiv anders zu machen und äh, dich eben nicht in deiner Lebensgestaltung von dem Staat und der Polizei äh, bestimmen zu lassen, sondern es wieder selbst in die Hand zu nehmen. Ey, wir müssen uns mit ganz vielen treffen. Nicht nur wir hier, Haus und da noch drei, vier Leute, sondern offen machen. Das heißt, total viele Leute und dann irgendwann hören die auf zu zählen. Dann kommen die üblichen Verdächtigen, dann kommen noch andere, dann kommt jenes und selbst. Dann haben die keinen Überblick mehr und das ist, macht eine Stärke, nämlich ganz viele zu hören. Und dass nicht irgendwie drei Hanseln immer ihr Gesicht hinhalten, sondern dass ganz viele Leute sie einfach bewegen. Gear. He's wearing like a um, hat with a little badge on it, and then the rest are all.
all riot gear. <laughs> and, uh, and the cops on the side don't have riot gear. The wall won't work ecologically, it won't work economically, and it won't work socially and politically. And uh, so it, 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 if you try to restrict an individual from trying to find a better life for himself or herself and their families, you're, you're trying to block uh, a pattern of evolution that just isn't going to be blocked. Any species is going to do anything they can to do better, to survive, to uh, whatever it takes. They're not going to stop. They're going to put their lives on the line. Every day they're going to put their lives on the line. We say that the only thing the wall won't stop are people. Because wildlife, migrations, cross-border flow of all of these natural systems will be disturbed. But people will go over, around, under, the wall. We've been very interested to see uh, how this affects the flow of migrants. It uh, doesn't seem to. There's, there's uh, popular staging places that are now directly opposite the wall and uh, it's clear people are taking off in the night and uh, being hoisted over the wall. So, so uh, I don't think it has deterred the immigrants at all. People are getting here illegally by driving across. I mean, or coming across legally with visas and then um, overstaying their visas. Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's a huge problem. And people crossing the river, uh, that's, that is just a very small part of it. And even that part... Border Patrol says over and over again that uh, it only slows somebody down by five minutes. So we're going to spend billions of dollars to slow somebody down for five minutes? Uh, it's, you know, it's basically a speed bump, but it's a speed bump that's going to destroy critical habitat and, you know, also do tremendous damage to agriculture and ecotourism and the economy of an already very poor area. There's been documented so many times, group of immigrants jumping the first fence, the second one, the third one, and getting away. So it's not working. No matter how difficult they would make it, they found ways to, to jump that fence. If they do all these impacts, build the wall here in San Diego County and Tijuana Estuary, do all these impacts, what it's going to do, it's not going to stop the immigration problem. It's going to move it to another area. So has it really solved anything other than significantly impacting the resources in our county? That's, that's the question. And this is like the law of the thermodynamics. There's pressure here and there's a vacuum there. People can still find jobs and there are countless opportunities to make money in the U.S. and pressure is building here. So unless that pressure gets balanced, people are going to cross that border. And they're going to find more innovative ways to do it, I'm sure. It's 15th century technology trying to solve a 21st century problem. When you see people willing to come across and take the chances and the risks they do, and they die, and they die, and they die, you know that, that uh, you're, you're fighting against a losing battle. You've got to find a better way. You've got to find a way to distribute wealth uh, in an equitable for fashion. It's, it's necessary to address concerns with national security. We just think that uh, it can be done in a more environmentally sensitive manner. This is about the environment right here. This is about the people who are dying here. This is about the opportunities, the species, the habitats that we're losing here. It's not about who the president is going to be or what they think or how they feel. It's real. Wake up and smell the coffee, right? I mean, it's, it's, it, we've got a big job on our hands and we've got to resolve these problems in a humane way, not in a ridiculous way, by building borders and fences and everything, walling each other off. This border wall is not the solution. It will not stop people from coming. It hasn't. Uh, however, its effects on many other uh, aspects of this region will be devastating. We better rearrange our priorities pretty fast or we're going to have some real problems.
So if you're watching this and you like this program, maybe you can help. Maybe you make videos or know someone who does. Someone who's involved with a local struggle and wants to document that struggle. Or maybe someone who's already making short little documentaries and wants more opportunities to get the word out about what they're doing. There's more details about this project at newsreel.indymedia.org. Help spread the word. Thanks for your help and thanks for watching. continuation of what happened in November. Securitas has has turned up the heat on the workers that patrol the port and our security guards here. And so what's happening is we came back out because we, we heard from people in the community that one of the leaders here had been terminated from his job for posting a union flyer. And as a community, we want the Port of Tacoma, the City of Tacoma, Maersk and Securitas to know we're not going to take workers being treated this way in our community. We are the union. We are the union. The mighty, mighty union. Everywhere we go. Everywhere we go. My name is George Twiggs. They were cutting the ties between me and the company because I was distributing illegal propaganda. They, they suspended me on a Wednesday and called me at home on Thursday and fired me over the phone. I had a poster that, that said, Welcome to ILWU Country. This is your new union. And the company saw this poster, and that's why they terminated me. You know, it did not represent the, the union that they wanted. The difference between the union that the company wants and ILWU is ILWU uh, represents the employees. The, company, the union that the company wants represents the company. Now, I've been a member of that union uh, three years prior, and, um, uh, and they did absolutely nothing for the guards and everything for the company. George is one of the very strong leaders at Securitas, guards who were working at the APM terminal, who got together and they decided they were going to organize for real. In the intervening last five months, Securitas has pulled out all the stops violating federal laws and, as George mentioned, are now facing over 10 federal charges against them for doing so. People like George at the terminal who got together, showed that unity and stood up have forced the company to back off piece by piece. So, for instance, the company was telling everybody that the company union was here to stay for three months mm -hmm. and that if guards like George and everyone else ever stood up to try and throw them out, they'd be out of a job and they should give up hope because they'd never succeed. Well, because of George and his co-workers on the job, yeah. they successfully did throw the sham organization out. And then the company further lied to people saying, because you've thrown the company union out, we're now going to cut your wages and not pay you a bonus and tried to show people they would be punished for doing so. Well, because George and his co-workers stuck together, they forced the company to back off so that not only did the company not cut wages, they turned around and gave everybody a pay raise. At right. the same time, they announced that the company union had been thrown off the terminal. So piece by piece, people have started to see what happens when you stick together. Uh, the company had a vote for a union back in December. The people that were against that union were not invited. Fact is, we were told, if you're going to vote against it, you cannot participate. Prior to our vote back in August, uh, uh, the company uh, started their threats. You know, if, if you vote, if you vote this union out and, and bring in the ILWU, you're going to lose your jobs. And even the company, in their own code of conduct, says it's the, it's the employee's choice, and they have violated their own code of conduct. They've tried to bring their union in twice uh, under different names, but it, it turns out to be the same union. 
and twice we've had them tossed out. And it's fair to say most people support ILWU? Most of the guards support the ILWU. The company's going to lose on this. They illegally fired George for being a union supporter and activity. You know, we are very confident we will prevail. Um, it's just a question of time, really. By the fact that they are starting to feel more and more desperate, um, they've tried to take some desperate measures like firing union supporters. I think we are going to push full speed ahead. Um, and, you know, from what I'm seeing from George, no signs of uh, letting up or giving up, but no just signs. the opposite, I think. Just right? the opposite. So it's just a question of time now before we win. Don't we own the port? Don't we own the port? Whose port? Our port! Whose port? Our port! Whose port? Our port! Whose port? Our port! And the Longshore are still um, honoring our lives. This fight has been going on since prior to August. Uh, the company has done everything that they can possibly do to stop it. The fight is not over. It will continue. We will prevail. We will be members of ILWU. is running out. I think that persuasive case is there now, but they're not cooperating. Not testing whether something can be found. It's about weapons inspectors hunting and pecking all over the country. First they said no, then they said planes only. Now we hear 15,000 troops. The problem is we wanted 80,000 troops. Yes, a diplomatic push finally come to military shove. And that seems now to be drawing closer. On Sunday, the U.S. brought out the biggest guns of its administration. We, under we understand the impact that could have. An attack on Iraq, Persian Gulf War II, the sequel. But well, the attack already yeah. at the beginning. You're running uh, up against a huge, massive military force that's heading into your crib because we know from a defector in the United States, the evil Satan is bearing down on it. Doing. What, where do they get permission? They came early in the morning. We got a receipt for the fencing that we found on the floor that he put around here. They saw it at 6.30 in the morning. The fencing came at 7.30. They were already there. Chainsaws were moving before the fencing even arrived. And they'd already killed the trees there. Two friends of mine managed to acquire planking from behind the church behind with the pastor's permission on their lunchtime and get the tree house up, which stopped them getting this tree. Gabs is still asleep up there because he's been awake a long time, as you can imagine. And that is what stopped their progress at the moment. Well, the plans we've... So, what's this all about? It's actually all about what Oxford City Council has sanctioned in the redevelopment of Bond Square by cutting down already one, two, three, four, five, because two of them were saplings, trees at the early hours of the morning, three days ago now. I live below it, my friend's up the tree house. It's about trying to save this tree, but it's about raising awareness as well. What are they? This was an elm. See, where, this is where they've already rotivated and dug out the roots. This was an elm. This here was another great oak, an oak tree. We had a gentleman last night who came up and the blue top there and the green top there he brought us, along with a flask of coffee and food, and he met his 
got his wife here. Oh, and the man beautiful. was 82 years old and he married her at 21 years old. Less. Tarmac and um, block paving. Mm -hmm. And they say mature saplings. Mm. Well, <laughs> contradiction in terms. Isn't it? A mature, mature sapling. sapling. <laughs> <laughs> Seen a lot in there and it's going to be pedestrianised and they're going to put apparently eight saplings or they say mature saplings in the place of these trees. Well, look at the thing behind, the tree behind you. How can you replace that in any of your lifetimes? Even your children's lifetimes, how can you replace that? Well, one tree there, one tree there, two trees over here. And you'll have to walk with me to, so I can show you. I'll show you their, their sights. Thank you. This was an oak. That was an oak tree. Okay. Everybody knows that all the people don't have liberties, all the people don't have freedom, all the people don't have justice, and all the people don't have power, so that means none of us do. Jello Biafra for the Independent Media Center and the camcorder, Truth to be hard. Only thing that's going to stop this is a militant, militant demonstration against the city of San Francisco. Hey, hey! The movement is intending to fill the streets and reclaim the streets and reclaim the spaces that have been absolutely hijacked. I think there's a lot of people here for how freezing cold it is out here. I'm really excited. I did not think there was going to be this many people. I'm just totally pumped. Thank <laughs> you.